The following is a presentation of the Canadian Centre for Diversity and Inclusion. All content presented is the exclusive intellectual property of CCDI. Any sharing, reproduction, or use of this material or content requires the express written permission of CCDI. Should you wish to use this content in any way, please contact Michael Bach, founder and CEO, via email at michael.bach at ccdi.ca. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This is Jeremy Johnson from CCDI, and I will be moderating today's webinar. It is now 1 p.m. Eastern, so we'll go ahead and get started. Today's webinar is the CCIP Virtual Open House, and the webinar will be presented by Pamela Mullins, PhD, Senior Coordinator of Learning at CCDI. We'd like to thank our employee partners, individual practitioners, and those of you who have taken part in the webinars before. If you're new to CCDI, we hope this session provides you with a valuable learning experience. Uh, a few housekeeping notes. To ensure you can hear the presentation, uh, we have muted everyone's line. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them in the chat box. We encourage you to take notes throughout the webinar. Although the presentation slide deck is not available for distribution, we are recording the session, including the questions at the end. If you need a recording, you can simply request for it. Now a couple of points about the webinar platform itself. You'll notice in the top right side of the webinar screen, there's a full screen button. It's the button with the four arrows. Feel free to click it if you'd like to view the webinar in full screen mode. We also have closed captioning available for this webinar. You can view it in the box on the top right of your screen. And right below, you also notice a Q&A chat box. This is where you can enter any questions or comments you have for Pamela. Please note that only Pamela and I can see your questions that are coming in. It is anonymous. We will hold off answering questions until the end of the presentation, and I'll explain the process involved with that at that point. With that, I'm pleased to introduce Pamela, who will take over at this point. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And as Jeremy mentioned, if you know someone who was unable to attend today, we are recording today's session, so feel free to reach out to us at ccip.certification at ccdi.ca if you require um, the recording. So in today's session, uh, I'm going to start, for those of you who may not be as familiar with CCDI, um, by letting you know that we're unique in Canada, as we're a charity that owns a consulting business that funnels any revenue back into the charity. Um, but our main purpose is to provide services for our employer partners, who benefit from a number of things. So we do a lot of networking and learning events in cities across Canada. These are called communities of practice events that are geared to provide a forum for local DNI practitioners to meet and discuss topics that are relevant to them in their context. Uh, we also host uh, Unconference in the fall across Canada for a, uh, a topic. Last year in 2017, the Unconference focused on the intersectionality of diversity and wellness. Also, if you're an employer partner, all your employees have access to our monthly webinars that are available in both English and French. And we also have a knowledge repository as well as uh, a lot of different original research and toolkits available on our website. Beyond the benefits of being an employer partner, a consulting business provides a number of services that range from assessment and coaching, measurement and analytics, and the learning department, which also includes e-learning modules. And of course, we wouldn't be CCDI without the support of our founding partners who stepped up to help us get started in the first place. We're proud to announce that we've now surpassed 180 employer partners, and we continue to add new partners each month. So the agenda for today's session, um, it's a unique project that I did within CCDI is the CCIP certification. And we'd like to note that it's a designation for diversity and inclusion professionals. And it's the first of its kind. So we're going to review what that certification is. We'll provide an overview of the entire process to become CCIP certified professionals. And then we explain in detail each step of the process. At the end of the presentation, there'll be a Q&A. And uh, so if you have any questions that we haven't addressed in this presentation, hopefully you will be able to address that at the end of the um, webinar. 
And the process that I'm going to review today is simply starting with the eligibility and registration, followed by the exam, the professional experience dossier, and then the certification and maintenance. So what is the CCIP? Well, despite the expansion of DNI um, functions and roles within Canadian organizations, there's no professional designation that exists for DNI professionals. So the Canadian Certified Inclusion Professional Designation, or CCIP, intends to fill this gap. So CCIP is a professional designation designed to assess the existing knowledge, skills, and experience of diversity and inclusion professionals against a set of predefined competencies. Please note that CCIP certification is not an educational program. So the difference is important. Educational programs are designed to provide training and instruction to help participants acquire or enhance their knowledge or skills. Whereas certification programs such as CCIP are designed to assess an individual's existing knowledge or skills against a set of predefined competencies. So the latter is accomplished in a way that is completely independent from the provision of training or instruction. As a CCIP certification is a rigorous and standardized process, a standard set of predefined competencies has been created to assess candidate skills. So this set of predefined competencies is called the CCIP competency framework, and it is developed uh, under the direction of a national advisory committee and through consultation with more than 200 diversity and inclusion leaders across Canada. So in other words, the CCIP competency framework is the body of knowledge for diversity and inclusion professionals, and it describes the core competencies of DNI professionals who practice in Canada. And there are 12 areas of competence that have been identified that you can see on your screen. And this corresponds to um, a numerous things that we'll discuss throughout the webinar today. Standardizing what it means to be a DNI professional through designation is important because it ensures that employers, um, it ensures that DNI practitioners are meeting rigorous standards when presenting themselves as DNI professionals. So, who are CCIP professionals? Well, there's several reasons why a DNI professional may decide to be certified by a CCIP. By completing the requirements for CCIP certification process, a DNI professional can now demonstrate that they are an inclusive leader and a global strategic thinker, passionate about developing inclusive workplaces, and they're able to provide subject matter expertise and strategic support to internal and external stakeholders related to initiatives aimed at addressing issues of diversity, equity, and human rights in the workplace and promoting inclusion within organizations. The CCIP certification also guarantees a DNI professional can provide a holistic understanding of diversity, equity, and human rights as it relates to the impact of the organization on its customers or clients, members, and communities uh, that they operate within the mandate of established Canadian legislation related to employment equity, human rights, and accessibility, and provide services that improve the quality of workplaces for all Canadians. In brief, once certified, DNI professionals acquire the right to use the designation and the right to use the initial CCIP after their name. And in this way, the CCIP designation will enable them to obtain a formal and standardized acknowledgement of their knowledge, skills, and experience in the DNI field, and thus effectively showing employers and clients the breadth and depth of their experience. Another benefit of the CCIP designation is that certified professionals can also develop a competitive edge in a tough job market. But it's important to note that DNI is not currently a regulated profession in Canada, so you're not required to have a license to work in this field. So as such, holding the CCIP designation is not a prerequisite for working in DNI, but you can see how it would add to your value. So we'll now provide just a quick overview of the CCIP certification process, and then I'll go over each step more thoroughly. So it consists of seven steps. Step one, you need to assess your eligibility. So you are eligible to enter the certification process if you have three years of relevant
relevant diversity and inclusion work experience, and if you have at least two references, can be colleagues, supervisors, or clients, who can speak to your work experience in diversity and inclusion. Step two, once you have assessed your eligibility, the next step is to prepare your documents. So you'll need to provide a chronological resume as well as the assessment of eligi eligibility form, which can be found on our website. And you need to describe your diversity and inclusion work experience and provide those two references. Step three is simply registering online. So you go to the CCDI website, click the registration link, upload your assessment of eligibility form as well as that resume. And you also new this year have the option to purchase a training package that's complementary to the reading list. Um, it is all online e-learning modules. There are seven in total, and they just supplement the, the reading list uh, and help draw out pertinent information. And so registration is now open, and those things are now available. Step four is taking the CCIP exam. So for the next cohort of candidates, the next exam is October 16th. The exam tests your knowledge of the CCIP competencies that were refer referenced earlier with a multiple choice test that can be taken remotely. So it means that the only thing you need is a laptop or PC and a reliable internet connection. Step five, after successfully writing the CCIP exam, You'll then prepare and submit a professional experience dossier, or the PED. And this is a collection of short essays that provide examples of practical work situations where you have applied or demonstrated the competencies included in the framework. And you're also then requested to identify an external assessor who can evaluate those essays and write a short DNI leadership assessment. And all of this can be downloaded on our website. Step six, once your submission has been approved by your external assessor, that is when you officially become a CCIP, and you can use that acronym in your signature, and your name will then be added to an online registry of CCIPs on the CCDI website. The first cohort can already be found there. And the last step is just in order to maintain that certification, we ask that you provide evidence of 20 hours of continued prof professional development per year to maintain certification. So we get some questions surrounding eligibility, so I'm going to go through that in a little more detail at the moment. So the first step for you to establish um, whether you are a candidate is to determine if you're eligible. As I mentioned, you have to have three years of relevant DNI work experience. So experience must be full-time work. We're talking about 35 hours a week or the equivalent, and it needs to have a Canadian focus. Part-time and volunteer experience are applicable. And you can claim approximately one week of experience for every 35 hours of part-time and volunteer work. If you have further questions about this, we do invite you to email us with any of your questions, or as we mentioned, there's a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. And then at least two of the three years of this experience, we ask for it to be relatively recent. So that means acquired within the last six years. As we know, the job market is continuously changing. And then the references, as I mentioned, you can have colleagues, supervisors, or clients who can speak to your work experience in diversity and inclusion. So for the purposes of the assessment of eligibility, relevant work experience is simply defined as any professional experience that helps candidates develop the competencies that are included in the framework, and that's really the focus here. So sample relevant tasks might include uh, develop or manage a DNI strategy, develop, deliver training or learning solutions on DNI topics, if you've created or implemented metrics to support DNI strategic planning, or you've worked with external stakeholders such as community partners to support or promote the advancement of DNI goals and initiatives, or if you've presented research or supported or advocated for DNI initiatives, all of these things count as part of the experience that we're looking for. So if you again are unsure about any of these things, please feel free to email us. You can use the eligibility checklist that's also available uh, on our website to verify whether you meet the eligibility requirements. Um, and it's, if you just see here, uh, it's located under the related documents. And that might also help you determine 
uh, if you are eligible for the CCIP. Step two is then preparing your documents, as we mentioned. So if you believe you do meet the eligibility requirements, then you prepare the documents um, to get ready for your online registration. So you complete the assessment of eligibility form, then you prepare your resume. We ask you to list roles, positions in reverse chronological order, and for each role or position to indicate job title, name of the organization, time of employment, that means the start and end date, as well as the job responsibilities. And then these two documents allow the CCIP staff to then verify that you've acquired the necessary relevant work experience within the mandatory timelines. And so you just need to have these two documents ready before you begin that online registration process. And this next slide is just an example of what you might have uh, to prepare in your, your resume that includes, as I mentioned, the job title, the name of the organization, the time of employment, and a little bit about the job responsibilities that help us to determine that uh, you have the uh, experience that's required. And then lastly, step three, when you go to register online, as part of the registration process, you will need to provide your contact information and be prompted to upload both uh, that eligibility form and your resume. And then finally, be required to pay the certification fee. So please note that since um, this month, you have also the possibility to purchase the online training that I mentioned that will help you study for the exam. Uh, this training will be available in English and French and has the option for audio overlay or a written script to follow along or both. And all of these modules are available through our learning management system. Registration is currently open. It opens twice a year for a two-month window. So uh, the next cohort, as I mentioned, uh, the exam is in October. And so registrations for this are open um, now until September 14th. And when you do go to register online, this is simply what the page looks like. There are four steps that you'll see at the top. You need to provide some information. Then there's the opportunity to upload your assessment of eligibility form and resume. The third step will be payment. And then you'll receive a confirmation email that everything has gone through successfully. What happens after you register? So immediately, uh, if your payment has been successful, you'll receive a confirmation of payments. And then within five business days after registration, your documentation will be reviewed by the CCIP staff. If your documentation is complete and sufficient evidence has been provided detailing your relevant work experience, then you will receive an official confirmation of enrollment into the CCIP certification. The confirmation will include the confirmed date of your CCIP exam and a copy of the reading list. Uh, the reading list is simply to help you study for the exam. If your documentation is incomplete, you will be contacted by our staff and required to provide additional information. Please note that once you have enrolled, you are expected to complete the certification within two exam cycles. So let's talk a little bit about the CCIP exam. So the first assessment of a candidate's knowledge and experience in DNI is the CCIP exam. It's comprised of approximately 100 questions and will test your knowledge with respect to areas 1 through 12 of the CCIP competency framework. So you are expected to be knowledgeable in all 12 areas of the CCIP framework, even though you are not required to have experience working in all those 12 areas. So you'll receive detailed information from the CCIP staff about the logistics of your exam, it's all delivered online, so you just need the access to a laptop. You'll be immediately notified of your exam results following the exam. And if you pass the exam, then you'll be able to move on to the subsequent step of certification, which is the submission of the professional experience dossier. However, if you fail the exam, the CCIP staff will provide you with directions on how to retake it. You'll not be required to resubmit any documentation. But there is a, um, a fee associated with retaking the exam. CCDI holds the proprietary rights and copyright for the CCIP exam, and obviously reproduction of any part of the exam is prohibited by law.
when you enter into the exam, you will see an interface that looks something like this. We've just got a couple of red arrows to draw your attention to a few key buttons. So on the top left, you'll see a bookmark, which is available to remind yourself to potentially come back to a question. Next to that, on the right, there is a little button that is for notes which opens a spot to the right of the question for you to write any thoughts that you may um, have if you need to come back to a question. Next to the notes is another button that is a clock, which allows you to both show the time or hide the time that's left. So in the exam, we generally offer three hours unless otherwise specified, and that time runs continuously since this is essentially a take-home exam. And then the submit button is in the top right corner. And then the bar that runs underneath all of those buttons, it simply shows all, uh, you can have your choice of whether you have all exam questions shown, just the bookmarked questions, or just the unanswered questions. And it helps you progress through the exam. And then there's also, um, in the middle, you'll see how many questions are left. And then we have the professional experience dossier, and we get a lot of questions around this. So I'm going to be um, quite thorough about this, uh, this next section. So upon successfully writing the exam, you then need to prepare and submit this PED. Um, we're going to talk about the role and requisites of the external assessor, the results a candidate may receive, and the PED logistics. And then finally, we'll talk about how to write an essay that meets the CCIP standards. And I'll show you an example of a candidate from the previous cohort. So the professional experience dossier is a form that candidates are required to complete. They have to provide examples of practical work situations where they've applied or demonstrated the competencies that were included in those 12 areas of the framework, and it's all in essay format. So the areas of competence are divided in a primary and secondary areas, and each of them have different maximum scores, as you can see from these two tables. And this combination ensures that the breadth of knowledge demonstrated through the CCIP exam is complemented by a depth of skills and experience in specific areas. So as I've mentioned earlier, that CCIP, CCIP candidates are not expected to demonstrate experience in all 12 areas of the competency framework, but they have to become certified uh, and in order to become certified, you have to obtain a minimum score. So primary areas score a minimum of 40 points, and then the secondary, you must score a minimum of 10 points. So a total of 50 points altogether. So it means that a candidate may decide not to write essays for all the areas of competence, but to just select a few areas as far as the total score of the essays that they can get for the primary area, which is 40, and then the total score for the secondary areas, which I mentioned was 10. If you decide to do so, consider that you may not receive the maximum score for each essay. So it's sensible to write essays that can get you a maximum score higher than 40 for the primary areas, and same for the secondary areas higher than 10. And in terms of what the form looks like, this is an example here. There's a space where you can write the essay with a recommended word limit of 50, sorry, 500 words. Um, there's a section reserved for the external assessor's evaluation at the bottom. And we note that each essay that you write should be different. And this document can be downloaded from our website. It's listed in the Related Documents section. It's the fifth item. Once you've completed the PED submission form, you then click the Submit button at the end. And if you would like a copy for your own records, please save it before clicking the Submit button. 
And then the CCIP staff will forward it to the um, elected external assessor for review and validation. So the external assessor. They play an important role in the CCIP certification. This individual will review and evaluate the essays submitted by the candidate, and they will provide a leadership assessment of the candidate. So how is the external assessor selected? Well, they're nominated by the candidate in the PED form. So before nominating an external assessor, we strongly encourage candidates to contact their potential external assessor in advance and ask for their availability. This external assessor can be one of the two references that you provided as part of your assessment of eligibility form. And when identifying an external assessor, consider that they must meet the following criteria. So they need to be um, have a good general understanding of the DNI space. They do not necessarily have to be a DNI professional, but they must have a clear understanding of the candidate's current or past work responsibilities and outcomes as they relate to the skills and abilities required to become a certified CCIP. And they should have direct knowledge of your DNI work experience. So the external assessor has worked with you potentially closely as a supervisor or manager or coworker for at least six months and must be able to substantiate your experience and expertise as they relate to the skills and abilities required to become a certified CCIP. Direct or indirect knowledge of those roles and experiences that you might have referenced in the PED submission is useful. So the external assessor should know you well in a professional capacity and be able to speak intelligently about your skill set, career progression, and work ethics. And on the note of independence, the external assessor must not be your direct report nor a relative. So in principle, the external assessor should be able to assess your submissions without a conflict of interest. And lastly, noting time availability. So the external assessor should be able to commit to approximately an hour required to provide input to support your certification process. And they should be willing to be contacted by the CCIP staff as required. Once the external assessor has completed the evaluation of the professional experience dossier, they then submit the PED back to the CCIP staff via email. And so there's two possible outcomes here. If the scores provided by the external assessor meets the required passing score of 50 points and the leadership assessment is positive, then you become eligible to be certified and you'll receive an official notification of certification from our CCIP staff. If, however, the score provided by the external assessor does not meet the required passing score of 50 points, or if the leadership assessment has negative comments, then you'll be asked to resubmit the PED within the subsequent exam cycle, and a resubmission fee may apply. Regarding the logistics of the PED, Please note that CCIP staff will give candidates a deadline for submission of their completed PED form. And the next cohort, um, the PED submission date is set for December 21st, 2018. If candidates wish to reschedule their submission, then a rescheduling fee may apply. So how to write the PED? In each of your essays, you want to provide an example of practical work situation or a set of situations where you've applied or demonstrated the skills and competencies in that area. So as such, we suggest that you review the competencies included in each area before you write the essay. And then the essay must provide the following information. So you need situational context where the circumstances of standard or operational or non-standard was the situation high stake or low stake, a detailed and practical description of what you did, which skills and abilities did you demonstrate, what were the indicators of your success in that situation, and who else was involved and in which capacity. So we recommend that you do keep the essays as concise as possible. The recommended length is 500 words. You're not going to be penalized for writing an essay that's longer than 500 words. However, be mindful of the fact that this could create additional work for your external assessor. So as promised, I said I would share with you an example from our first cohort 
I will read it out to you as I recognize that the uh, font is quite small there. But this is an excellent essay written by a candidate from last year who, um, this is about the second area of competence, which is build a DNI strategy. And it asks that in less than 500 words, um, please in answer in detail those five questions that were listed. And so their response was as follows. You can see at the top, as and the job title and company has been omitted, I was instrumental in building the company's first DNI strategy. I worked with external experts, CCDI, third-party providers, and internal company stakeholders to create a global DNI strategy that has since been approved by management and the board of directors. As this was the first DNI strategy created at the company, and there were no existing examples in the XYZ industry to pull from, this work was non-standard and high stake. I worked in partnership with the VP, diversity, and manager, corporate social responsibility, and collectively with the company's DNI committee. We use the global diversity and inclusion benchmarks because of their global application, and it is a holistic approach which broadens the scope of DNI from simply a human resources function to work, work which covers both internal and external aspects of the business and supports the broader sustainability agenda. Using the global diversity and inclusion benchmark as a guide, I shaped the DNI strategy to ensure it was relevant for our company in the XYZ industry. In building the strategy, we developed a vision, mission, and over 100 specific tactics to move the needle. We also established key performance indicators to measure outcomes as well as outputs. I drafted short, mid, and long-term KPIs tied to business drivers that were relevant for our company. Sustainability, innovation, and people talent. I also identified and engaged with key stakeholders at all levels from many different areas of the business. As the manager of this undertaking, the skills I demonstrated in building the DNI strategy were effective communication, engagement, and accountability with stakeholders, external partners, members of the DNI committee, and executive management. I displayed organizational and effective planning skills, aligning meetings and events to build on one another. As the development of the strategy took many months, I was patient, persistent, and very adaptive in redrafting the strategy whenever feedback was received from different stakeholders. The DNI strategy has been built and was approved in the year has been blanked out by executive management and the board of directors. I am now managing the successful delivery of the DNI strategy as well as executing many tactics within and give quarterly updates on the progress of the DNI strategy to executive management and the board of directors. So we can quickly analyze this together. You can see that in the first paragraph, the candidate presents the situational context, specifying that it was non-standard and that the situation was high stake, which pertains to question one. This individual also specified who else was involved and in which capacity, which responds to question five. In the second paragraph, the candidate offers a detailed and practical description of what they did, which responds to question two. In the third paragraph, the candidate describes which skills and abilities they demonstrated in that situation, which responds to question three. And in the final paragraph, the candidate explains which were the indicators of their success in that situation, which responds to question four. So the last portion of the webinar before we get to any Q&A is just discussing the certification and maintenance. So once you receive your official notification of certification from CCIP staff, you will be a Canadian Certified Inclusion Professional. Certified professionals can use a CCIP acronym in their signature and their name is added to an online national registry. The registry allows employers to verify the credentials of potential candidates for employment while enabling CCIP professionals to showcase their ex expertise as recognized by a knowledgeable third-party entity. Certified CCIP professionals will be removed from the registry if they fail to maintain the certification as required. And this is our national registry. You can find it on our website of our first cohort of successful CCIP candidates.
So, CCIP professionals are required to maintain that certification through professional development activities and continuing education activities. So more specifically, they're required to obtain 20 hours of continued professional development, or we call it CPD, each year after the first year of certification. So for example, if you've received your certification between January 1st and December 31st, 2018, the CPD cycle will start on January 1st of 2019, and you will be required to submit evidence of completion of 20 hours CPD hours by December 31st, 2019. This can be documented in the CPD activity log. So you can find that on our website, along with the payment of a CPD submission fee. Please note that failing to submit the CPD activity log and payment will result in suspension of your certification and potential removal of your credentials from the online registry of certified professionals. So this is an example of the page of the CPD activity log. And as you can see, it's provided a space where uh, you can describe the continued professional development that you've done. It doesn't need to be long. We've got max 300 words. And it's just to ensure that you're still engaged in the field and um, engaged in ongoing development. So I open up the floor now for potential questions. Thank you, Pamela, for that fantastic presentation. Uh, like Pamela mentioned, we have some time for questions right now. Um, like I mentioned before, to participate, you can type your question in the Q&A chat box on the right side of your screen. And again, only Pamela and I can see your questions that are coming in. It is anonymous. And to manage your questions as smoothly as possible, we'll address them um, first comes first served. And if you do not want to type your questions in the chat box, you can also email them to events at ccdi.ca and we'll answer them over email to you as well. So we have a few questions already coming in. The first one, Pamela, is uh, does experience outside of Canada, uh, is it considered eligible? That is a good question. The reason that we do um, ask for experience that is Canadian is simply because the content of the exam and the reading list uh, is all Canadian as well. Uh, if you do have experience outside of Canada, as long as it pertains to um, the legislation that we now work within in Canada, I think as long as you can argue a case that it is applicable, um, that is definitely experience within the DNI field. I think each situation is unique, and so if you have any questions um, when you're unsure, we invite you to please email us, and we're happy to chat with you over the phone or via email to discuss your specific experience outside of Canada. Thank you. The next question is, is the exam available in French? It is. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> um, we've got a bunch of questions on this particular question, actually. It is, um, what does the exam cost? Yeah, I figured we might get this question, so I've just saved it <laughs> until the end here. So the full registration fee is 1199 Canadian. And then there is a 15% discount that applies to any employer partners. There's also a 10% discount if you are an individual practitioner. And then, as I mentioned, there is additional um, training package now available that does support the reading list that is all available online as e-learning modules. And that training package is going to be available for $200. And again, those same discounts apply. Uh, continuing the question, it is, what are the ongoing CPD fees? There's a variety of different things, as I mentioned throughout the presentation, things such as if you have to reschedule any of our deadlines or if you need to rewrite the exam, um, if, uh, and then the ongoing professional development to submit the CPD. So I think all of that information is best to just look up um, the specifics online. And if you have further questions, please reach out to us. Thank you, Pamela. The next question is, how should I determine my external assessor? Excellent question. So we dev definitely talked a little bit about that. Um, but I think it's something that you really should think, um, think about in terms of particularly whether they can be timely and thorough would be my, my main two things to consider. Um, making sure that they do have the capacity to review those essays.
values, and then just being able to assess you um, fairly and thoroughly to comment on any of your experience. Uh, we've got a repeat question. I, I think it just need a little bit more clarification. It is, sure. what is the regular CDP fee, the yearly fee? Is it not standard? So the, you're, sorry, just to clarify, we're talking about for the, uh, to submit the activity log? I believe so, yes. <laughs> um, I don't have it in front of me. You're at, yep, you're, that's something that is going to be available online. My apologies. Uh, that has escaped me at the moment. Um, but it is. it should be the same every year. So basically, it's just that fee to keep yourself certified under the CCIP name, um, just to ensure that you're still active within the field. It, uh, it won't be significant, but, um, but there is a fee associated with maintaining that certification. Awesome. The next question is, what is an exam cycle? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, when we talk about an exam cycle, basically it starts with registration and then it ends with the submission and evaluation of the professional experience dossier. So if you register um, during this cycle, and as I mentioned, the exam is set for uh, October, and you are, for whatever reason, unable to write that exam, then you are required to write it in the next exam cycle. So the next time that registration opens and the next exam that is set, you are required to then write the exam at that time in order to uh, avoid any additional um, late fees. And the same thing Perfect. would apply if you did not submit your professional experience dossier by the deadline. There is um, information online in terms of making sure that you submit it within the second exam cycle, or second, uh, sorry, PED submission timeline. Uh, we got a question earlier basically asking, is, is there a website link where all the fees are sort of mentioned that, that can actually be shared? You should find everything you need in the certification handbook that's available online. So when you visit our website, uh, you'll see that there's a number of different resources under related documents. And the first one that you see there is the certification handbook. And that really does go through the things that I've covered in the webinar today, as well as the fees uh, and all the deadlines, uh, timelines that are associated. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, are there any other countries who have similar certifications? And if so, have you explored their requirements and systems? That's really a, that's a great question. And it's really a question I'm, I'm um, the, the individual that was a, a large part of helping to get this off the ground is actually on maternity leave at the moment. Um, but there was definitely a great deal of research that was put into developing this certification process, and to my knowledge, I don't think there's anything quite like it. Um, I know it's sort of meant to mimic the certification or the designation of the HR field, and so there really isn't anything that's comparable for the DNI field since it's something that's so up and coming at the moment, and so we're really trying to fill a gap here with this, and we've reached out to a number of people across the country for their expertise to help this um, be developed and get it off the ground. And, uh, and they all were really excited about this process because I don't think they had been uh, exposed to anything similar either. So we're really pleased to offer this. Um, just while I have the floor as well for a moment, I just was looking through the handbook and there was the question about the, the cost for the CPD submission. So that's that activity log. I have found it here. Um, the price, the full price is $99. And uh, if you are an employer partner, then you do get that 15% discount on that fee. And then same thing, individual practitioners get that 10% discount. Thank you, Pamela. Looks like there's no more questions coming. And we'll give it a couple more seconds, just in case Absolutely. there's more. So I've just pulled up the handbook in front of me. It's got all kinds of information if you do wish to kind of go through it. Hopefully I've answered a lot of the things today so that you can kind of skim it. And then there's also another document that you'll find quite helpful if you haven't had a chance to take a look, which is the competency framework, which is the second in the list of related documents that you'll find uh, on our website. And so the competency framework just goes through in detail of um, all of those different 12 areas that were mentioned at the beginning of the webinar 
and um, what sort of counts under each of those areas. And all of that, as I mentioned, was developed through the National Advisory Committee and has gone through a rigorous process um, to develop those standards. Looks like there's no more questions coming in, so we can probably end the webinar at this point. Again, if you have any more questions that are uh, left unanswered, you can email them to events at ccdi.ca. Uh, I want to thank everyone for their time, questions, and excellent discussion today. Uh, and a big thank you to our presenter, Pamela, for that fantastic presentation and informing us about this. Uh, this concludes today's webinar. Thanks again for your continued support. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar. For more information on upcoming events, please visit our website at ccdi.ca.